thank you very much for watching my video and for your interest. My name is Maria Rupert, lawyer and arbitrator with a base in Dubai and offices in Spain and in Egypt. Today I would like to, <clears throat> to address a question that I'm, uh, I'm, I'm getting more and more questions, which is mainly relating to employment law in the UAE, in Dubai, in Abu Dhabi, Ras Al Khaimah, in, uh, in any of the seven Emirates. The question is namely, Maria, um, I want to leave my company. I want to go back to my country or sometimes uh, my company is firing. Uh, we're going through difficult times. I'm, I am afraid that I may be the next one. If they fire me, how much will I get? Anything I, I need to think of in the event that I want to leave or they will fire me. The first thing I do when they ask me this question is uh, I will be very happy to help because I have plenty of experience on the, on the topic. In order to do that, I need you to send me your contracts. And I say contracts in plural because usually you have the offer letter, then you have an official contract, half in English, half in Arabic. And then some companies also uh, send out a um, complementary contract where you can, in, in the offer letter, you have very basic information, salary, hours, who you will report to, etc. On this one is the, is the Arabic. It's very basic as well uh, because it's complemented by the labor law, but, uh, but it's in half English, half Arabic. And that's the important part. And this one will help uh, help for the processing of your visa. And this one is, ex is it goes into the details. If I get sick one day, what do I do? Do I have to go to doctors and bring a certificate? Uh, if I get sick two days, um, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So with these three documents, we need to figure out what are the terms of the, of the employment. Uh, the official contract will be the basic one, the, 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 the one that will prevail. So in the event that there are, co uh, there are terms here or here that contradict the official contract, it will be very difficult to, uh, to oppose them. Let's say that the official contract says that you are in a limited contract and this contract says you are under an unlimited contract, right? And this one, well, it will be very important whether it exists or not. So in order to contradict the official contract, we need loads of evidence, emails, exchanges, other documents that you may have, etc., etc., etc. So it's very important to know what your terms are from the very beginning. So once we have the terms, we will be looking into two things mainly. One thing is the full, con full uh, salary, how much you get at the end of the month. Uh, at the end of the month, right? And then the basic salary is uh, the full contract minus transport and minus housing. You see this very clearly in the, uh, in the official contract uh, because it says you will get this basic salary, you will get this transport, and this will, you will get this housing. This is very important when we take a look at the offer letter and sometimes to the complementary agreement because sometimes they talk about these figures as a lump sum. They talk about a full salary and they don't, they don't break it down, right? It's very important because the gratuity, and this is one thing you will be entitled to if you have been working for the given company for more than one year, will keep into account the basic figure. Um, but basic salary helps to calculate gratuity. Gratuity, you get 21 days per year worked after the first year for the first five years. And after the first five years, you get 30 days. This is the company fires you. But if you walk out during the year one and year three, you will get only seven days per year. And if you walk out between year three and year five, you will be getting 14 days a year because you are subject to deduction. So gratuity is one. You will also we need to be getting uh, your, uh, your annual uh, taking leave. Usually we get 30 calendar days a year. Some companies give 22, 23, 24 working days. So it gives more flexibility in terms of taking long weekends, but the rule is 30 calendar days. So you will need to be getting the days that you didn't take off that year, or sometimes it's even two years, right? Last, you will also need to keep in mind that you need to get paid for your notice period, whether you worked or not. Some companies say, hey, we terminate today, go home the next two months, the next three months, the next month, we will pay you the same, but uh, we don't want you to be here. Sometimes it's a question of distrust. This is, this is legitimate, it's called uh, garden leave. So this is also possible. And then uh, if the reasons underlying the, the firing, if you are being fired, are not related, if you walk out, you won't be entitled to arbitrary dismissal, of course. But if you are being fired, uh, if the reasons are not relating directly to your performance, you could be asking for this, uh, for this compensation. And the judge will, uh, will have the, the, the power to grant in between one month to three months of your full salary 
as uh, as arbitrary dismissal. We need to watch out because they have the, the, the judges have great flexibility on this, and they look at the circumstances. We will need to take a look to the entire relationship with your company to uh, to evaluate. So I hope uh, this is of assistance. If you have particular questions, you know where to text me. Uh, send me an email and you know that I will be asking for the contract. So get them ready. I look forward to hearing from you. Thank you.